All right, so we're doing a EVAP leak test on a 2000 Toyota Tundra. Our fault code, P0440. The system on this one, canister's right here. This line goes to a purge valve that's up here. And there's another solenoid that sits here. There's a pressure sensor here. And it looks to me like this line that comes down here, it actually goes into the frame, let me show you. So it comes out the canister here, runs down this way, and then this rubber line right here, I'll move my hand in a second, actually goes into the frame. And when you see a line that goes into the frame, that's generally your vent. So that's the line we're gonna need to close off. Now whether we can do it with the scan tool or not is up for debate still, but what I generally do with a smoke test is, is just, um, put the smoke in our service port, see where it's coming from. If it's coming out of the frame, I know that's where my vent is. We'll block it off and then we'll go in the back and look. All right, so we have it hooked up to the battery, airline connected. What we wanna do is see the, the float, uh, the ball right here. I'm open this up all the way, give full system air and hit the button. It goes through a, f a five minute smoke cycle. And then we start looking for leaks in the system. There's multiple ways to use this. When we close the vent, I actually use this as a, as a guide for a, um, a decay. But the first thing I wanna do, because I don't know where my vent is yet, is I wanna see where my smoke's coming from. So let's put the truck up in the air. Well, we weren't seeing smoke come out of the back, so we're just doing a little experimentation here with the tool. Make sure we got smoke, and we do. Cool. But we weren't seeing it out of the back, we were smelling it, so I'm gonna take this Schrader valve out just to get a little bit more flow into this. That's probably from what a lot of people say, the preferred method. And this is a reverse thread too, for you guys that are new to this. These uh, Schrader valves, turn it to the right. Let's turn that off, that's killing us right now. There's smoke everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so righty tighty lefty loosey does not apply okay you guys hear me yeah, it's, it's reverse thread you got a small pair of needle nose pliers anyone Jason never mind I got it I got it we're good all right this should give us a little bit more smoke in the back I'm pretty sure that this is the one we're going to block off here. We'll find out in a minute. All right, just uh, confirming here with our light. Uh, this is the light, this halogen light that was given to us with this kit. This is, this is coming from the frame, which is actually normal. Let's see if I can catch this for you guys. It's kind of tough to see. Yeah, you see this? You know, I can see it. I can see it. So there's smoke pouring out of the frame and that I was correct, that is our vent line. For us to do an actual EVAP leak test on this, the proper way, I really need to close that vent off. We can do it multiple ways, but that is gonna be key. It's kind of tough to get the right angle with this light, but it is absolutely coming out of the filler neck right here. What I want you to do is turn that dial to make that ball drop about halfway on the gauge. So you'll see that little check ball. Just have it to where it's like floating in the middle for me. Let me know when you're there. Right about there. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, you will have smoke coming from up there because we never close the vent. <laughs> yes. yes. What you got? So it's coming right out of that filler neck right where that vent tube comes out of the side and uh, that was our suspicion going into this uh, but to be honest with you guys doing a proper leak test uh, does involve typically closing the vent off which we did not do uh, this leak was bad enough that we didn't have to so there is your leak Jay you need a filler neck when you're doing evap leaks 
okay? Especially when you can't find a leak, the, the key with using a tool like this is you want to use your flow meter that's on the side of it. When you close a vent valve off, what you wanna do before you start looking for smoke, really before you ever even turn the smoke machine on, is you wanna make sure that this ball drops all the way to the bottom. If it does, there's no leak in the system. If that ball is all the way at the top, like it is right now with the flow valve all the way open, you have a leak in the system, go find it. But this ball is a good guide for us for how big our leak is. Now the thing about using this is you have to close the vent valve to use this properly. So let me turn the smoke machine back on. I'll let you see the smoke coming out of this vent. This is the part that was going into the frame. Thank you. You guys should be able to see it from over there. If you go on the other side of the car, like over there, you should be able to see this. This tube, you see the smoke coming out of there? Yeah. Big time, right? Let's put a permanent light there this time. I want you guys to see this, hopefully. Maybe. Do you want me to hold that? Yeah, can you? Would you mind? All right, good. So what we want to do, I'm hoping, I'm not totally sure, but this, this piece here, if I, see that's a vacuum solenoid, that's not gonna work to block that off. I was thinking I was gonna bi-directionally take the scan tool command this solenoid to uh, change and that'll block my vent, but that's not the case here. This is actually done with vacuum. So really to, to block this, I can't use the scan tool and everything I just did over there and doing that desktop recording was useless because I'm now looking at this now, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm gonna electronically close this, mm -hmm. but I can't, it's a vacuum controlled valve. So what you would do on, on this system seriously is you would take and you would block this port. That's really all you would do. Take this line off, take a pair of needle nose vice grips and block this port and then you check your ball. So let's do that. You have a, this isn't our box, is it? Do, we got uh, needle nose? Yes. Hmm? That's a rag. All right, so you can pull that light out of there. We don't really need it. I'm gonna pinch this line off. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch this. With that line pinched, there's no more smoke going in the frame. And then from there, what we do is we watch this ball, this, this ball that's on this flow control meter. Um, if I turn this down myself, of course that ball is gonna drop. You can watch it do that, right? So again, this is what I would do generally. If I get a vehicle in with a small EVAP leak, before I even start checking for smoke, I'll put the machine on, I'll turn this all the way up, have full flow, I'll block the vent like I just showed you, and then I watch the system. As the system fills up, this ball will lower and lower and lower to the point where it'll be, on a good system, it'll be all the way at the bottom. This is how much flow, how much air is going into the system. Um, in our case, our EVAP leak is huge back there, so of course the ball is gonna be at the top. That's what we have. That makes sense? So if I get a vehicle, for example, that has like under 0.1 of a leak, I know it's gonna be really, really hard to find. And I know for a fact I need to be in an environment where there is no wind at all. Close the garage doors, look real close, look real hard, they're tough to find. But if I see one above 20, then I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna be able to find it. And that's how I use that flow control valve. And then you saw what, what we did to find our leak is we were actually able to regulate the flow, which was kind of nice. Um, but generally, full flow, block the vent, check this ball before you turn the smoke machine on and start looking for leaks. That's it, we're done with this one. People like to see what's in the box, oh. you know? Well, no, they sent me some other stuff. That's a, this is actually a, um, an air intake bladder. So rather than using like the cone that we've used to like smoke an intake, this thing will go into the air intake tube and then you blow it up. Wait, it's a valve. It's like a blood pressure thing, you know? But this this go this will go in. Explains a whole lot more why I couldn't get that to fill up. This will go in the air intake tube, which is like, I think more universal than this guy, yeah. you know? Or an exhaust too, you could use it and then the, the smoke would go in here and then you could do a uh, 
you know, your intake for an intake leak. But that's not what we're doing today. We're doing a I like EVAT. That. It's also a good so, workout. So yeah, they, they sent me that. This is called a easy intake, easy, easy intake. And then they sent me this one, which is kind of cool, um, which is a uh, cap. This goes on the fuel tank rather than um, smoke testing it from the front. This goes on the fuel filler neck. And then it has like these stick on gaskets replaceable that would go on here and then so we could smoke test it from the back which is helpful some cars no service port hard to get to the purge line yes albert now whenever we were smoke testing my jetta for fuel leak yes you use that yes put stuff in the back same thing uh for a fuel leak for your jetta we went with what you we went just put that we used karen smoke machine just stuck that in the fuel tank Oh, that, that kind of works. I mean, this, as long as you could get it to seal around there, I've never done it that way. Um, that could have been it. bad. This is um, for the fuel tankless, or fuel, no, fuel board. tankless, yeah. The fuel, uh, the capless fuel systems. That's what this adapter is for. It says, I've never used it yet. We'll see. Uh, I don't, it's not what we're gonna use on this Toyota. Um, and then in the container, they give us all this stuff, fluid, smoke, um, a nice bright halogen light. It's difficult to find leaks sometimes. Um, a bunch of adapters. And then this is the, the hook and stuff for the top. And then it comes with a Schrader valve tool and then a valve. Let me show you this one. I don't really like this design. I like my other one, but inside for the service port right but there's no straighter depression like this one has i don't know if you see the inside differences um this one will depress the straighter valve this one there's nothing in there so you have to remove the core uh you get better flow when you remove the core so i understand the difference but i have my old one i'm going to use that one still too so we got those and then it said in the in the instructions to um Make sure that you're only putting two ounces of refrigerant in. Oh, and then you get a free bottle of fluid if you register your tool. Sweet. All right, let's we'll tighten that up with a wrench. So don't have with me right now, but to fill it, there's our fill port. They give you this nice big old Allen wrench. The older older design had a. Uh, had a dipstick for the top and the, you added the oil to the top. I don't know if this one does or not. It does not. Now it tells me to add two ounces of fluid in the instructions. Well, my first complaint would be they sent me a bottle with no scale on it. If I'm gonna add two ounces, how the hell do I know what two ounces is, right? Um, there's my fill. Well, no, we don't want to overfill it. There's warnings. Don't overfill it. Is there some kind of a syringe or something? I don't know, man. It says, remove fluid plug with the hex key. Pour OEM approved vapor producing fluid into the fluid port, which by the way, I've researched is mineral oil. Mineral oil. But um, I'm wondering if it's a little bit different because what I found with the old older one when I use mineral oil it would bake in there and eventually would stop smoking very well it would still smoke but not as well as new fluid would so I'd drain it out put new fluid in wonder if this is a little different than that uh, never use dyes solvents or other contaminants in the intake or exhaust that may coat or harm the catalyst got it use a wrench but it just says do not overfill only takes two fluid ounces this is way more than two ounces use supplied yorker cap would that be this is this my yorker cap yeah it looks like it opens but if you turn it and slowly it. pour smoke producing fluid to top of the fill port okay okay but do you see my confusion to top of fill port so if well. if i'm just filling it to the top of here why are they warning me of overfilling it what's going to happen if i do you understand my confusion? <laughs> I can't, basically, I can't overfill it. Look, it says right there. 
You supplied Yorker cap to slowly pour smoke producing fluid to top of the fill port, two ounces. Then replace the oil fill hex plug and tighten. I don't know. I would imagine if you look inside of that, I'll fill it then to where the, I'd say the bottom of those threads, right where the top of that is. Oh. All right. I have no other choice, red line, than to do it that way. Little confusion there. Some Elmer's glue. That is the exact kind of. Two ounces, huh? But don't overfill it. Really not sure how you could overfill it. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. What do you think? I think it's probably pretty close to two ounces. Yeah, it should be full. I, I don't want to go. Yeah, I don't know if I'd keep going. It says top of the fill plug. I wonder if you fill up too little, does it matter? Well, I don't want to. I'll tell you what I'm going to do just as a guess. What do you think if I go down to here as far as two, it being two ounces? How many ounces is in the I don't know. It doesn't even tell me how many are in the bottle. That would help too. <laughs> uh, I guess that has to be getting close. Do not overfill. Only takes two fluid ounces to refill when empty. All right. But then it says on the bottle, replace, you supplied... Slowly pour to the top of the fill port. How do you overfill it if I'm filling to the top of the fill port? You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll dump it back out if I have to. All right, there we go. That's the top. That's probably pretty close to two ounces. What do you think? It's right at the bottom of the threads right now. All right, so I feel comfortable with that. That was a little misleading. The warning had me concerned, but that's it. We fill this, fill this up, it's ready to go. We're ready to go out and do our smoke test. Some bonus footage is this new bladder. Let's give this thing a shot, see how she does. Wanna pull that sensor out? No, hold on. Shouldn't need to pull that sensor out. I don't wanna do that. That might be an issue. Maybe we do go, well, let's just see how this, how this works out here. Oh, heck yeah, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Smoke machine. Air hose. You go on the other side, Matt. Don't kick the camera, though. Put this on, on the battery for me. And then put my airline in there. All right, so let's smoke this thing. Turn the valve all the way up. Mm -mm, I smell. I can smell it. Oh, it's coming out of that. You got a, is it coming out of the middle of that sensor? It yep. is too, that's crazy. I've never seen that before. I don't think, Matt, I've ever no. seen <laughs> the inside of an intake air temp sensor Right? Oh, I see some over here. Yeah, some, some Hold on, let me plug that connector in. That's weird. That is weird. I've never seen that. Maybe because normally they're plugged in. But there's it's definitely leaking around here too. It's better than what it was over on the uh, air intake mat. We changed this O-ring. He had a dry rotted O-ring here and you can't really get these. So we went to a junkyard and got one. It's definitely better. It is still leaking in that area. Let me get a shot of that. Yep, yeah, we're still leaking around there, Matt. Same spot. So, leaking a little bit in the throttle shaft too, but that's pretty, pretty substantial leak. It quit over here. Then this tube's leaking here too. Well, is it because it's not set up on this? Oh, that tube over here. Yeah. 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 
cool? Well, not cool, but at least you know where your leaks are at.